Hi, I'm Sanjay Nagchadri from the IBM Integration Bus Development Team. In this video, I will demonstrate the new capability in IBM Integration Bus version 10 Fixed Pack 9, which allows you to easily use an HTTP forward proxy server that has authentication enabled. The diagram shows the principal uses of a HTTP forward proxy server. The proxy server can obscure a client's IP address when routing requests from a private network to the internet. When a client's machine sends a request to a web server, the proxy server converts the private IP address to a public IP address before routing the request to the web server. The proxy server sends the response back to the client who initiated the request. By obscuring the client's IP address, it helps to block malicious traffic. The proxy server can be configured to block traffic access to certain websites. It can log which websites have been visited and which blocked websites were attempted to be visited. It can also log how much time is spent on websites. The proxy server can cache the data that is sent back so that if another client wants to access the same website data, the cached data can be sent back, which saves on network bandwidth. IBM Integration Bus is typically deployed within a company's internal network close to systems of record. This means that in some situations, IIB may be positioned behind a firewall with restrictions on the direct network connectivity when sending data to SaaS applications or internet services. Many companies will deploy an HTTP forward proxy server which sits between applications such as IIB and for outbound internet connection. The proxy server will act as a single point of control for the traffic, keeping a record of the requests which have been passed through and ensuring that responses are routed back to the correct client. The diagram shows that connections from multiple integration servers can be coordinated through a single HTTP proxy. IIB version 10 fixed back 9 extends IIB's capabilities to interact with a HTTP forward proxy server in several areas, including Salesforce, HTTP applications, and IBM Bluemix product insights. The existing HTTP SOAP and REST request nodes already have an HTTP proxy location attribute. This attribute can be used to specify the host name and port of a proxy server to route requests. The Salesforce request node has been extended to also have a HTTP proxy location attribute. If a HTTP proxy server does not have authentication enabled, then the HTTP proxy location attribute value is all that is needed. If the HTTP proxy server has authentication enabled, then the username and password should be specified using MQSI setDB palms. For MQSI setDB palms and MQSI report DB palms commands have been extended to allow you to specify the user ID and password for a proxy server if authentication has been enabled. If a proxy server name on the node matches with a proxy server specified on the MQSI setDB palms command, then IIB will use these credentials when connecting to the proxy. If you wish, you can specify a default set of credentials for the HTTP proxy server using MQSI setDB palms. But the message flow nodes must still have a value specified for the HTTP proxy server location. I have a message flow 
containing a REST request node and a Salesforce request node. Both the REST request node and the Salesforce request node are configured to send requests through a HTTP proxy server. A message is sent to the flow which contains a user ID. The first name and last name is retrieved using a REST API via the REST request node. The first name and last name are used as the filter criteria by the Salesforce request node to look up details of a contact in Salesforce. The contact details are returned from Salesforce. I will show the results of sending messages to the flow when the proxy server is configured with or without authentication. I am using Squid as my HTTP proxy server running on a Linux system. It is currently started and does not require authentication. The proxy server is defined on the REST request and Salesforce request nodes. When I send a message to the flow, a request is sent to Salesforce via the proxy server and the response contains the details for a contact in Salesforce. If I stop the proxy server and resend the message through the flow, I get an error, which indicates the connection was refused by the proxy server. I will change the proxy server to use authentication and restart it. When I send the message to the flow, I get an HTTP error code 407, indicating that the HTTP proxy server required authentication. If I set the user ID and password for the HTTP proxy server using MQSI setDBPalms and reload the integration node, I now see that I get a response from Salesforce when I send a message to the flow. In this video, I have shown how you can use the HTTP-based nodes and the Salesforce request node to use an HTTP proxy server. If the HTTP proxy server has authentication enabled, the user ID and password can be stored using MQSI setDBPalms. A default user ID and password can be specified using MQSI setDBPalms, but the message flow nodes must still have a value specified for the HTTP proxy server location. The HTTP proxy server name that is on the message flow node must match the identifier used in MQSI setDBPalms.